One of my favorite things about working at Antfood is getting to collaborate with people who come from wildly different backgrounds. We embrace the differences between different composers and try and find ways to allow that to complement other people's perspectives. Our friends at Carbon reached out to us about a creative project called Repeater. As we perceived it, it was a story about belonging. About dystopian oppression. About conformity, liberation. And the importance of finding your tribe. And we were excited about it. It offered the opportunity to experiment without constraint. The story spoke to us as it reflects a number of important aspects of Amphine culture. A collection of misfits finding their place together. The serene beauty of the unknown and the vulnerability of that. The culture of collaboration, where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The importance of letting go. And of course, the schadenfreude of an underdog enacting vengeance on its oppressors. And ultimately, we let our creative process be led by these themes in the film. I could even assign members from our team characters from the film. Wilson is obviously the chief. Yuta is the crystal one. Marie could be the mushroom one. Maybe Bennett's the feather one. And then I'm the scarab. I claim the scarab. Our creative began with the single seed of an idea. It would evolve and really disappear completely for weeks at a time. But most importantly, it created this foundation that allowed us to build on top of us. So I tried to work through this idea, but it really needed Charlie in our Amsterdam studio to make it special. I got the theme from Wilson and I just wanted to play around with it on the piano and make a really uh, free and very improvised variation. From this seed, we laid out a rough foundation of the musical motif. We added some MPC beats and some electric and electronic instruments. It wasn't good. It felt like a music video that wasn't doing the film or narrative any favors. It was just everybody's crazy thoughts just going in all at once. We didn't really know where any of the sounds were coming from uh, to a certain extent. <laughs> you know, we're going, yeah, to, we're going to. And it was kind of like a wild, chaotic moment in the process. We wanted more drama. We wanted more tension. And so, as we often do, we stripped it back leaving only a vestige of what was once there. But when we do this, it's not starting from scratch. There's an impression there. You just sort of stick with it until the idea starts to emerge from the ashes of all of the things you've thrown out and deleted it. From these ashes, we begin to add more ideas, fine-tuning and trashing them frequently. One of the themes of this film is the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And it really ties in to the culture of collaboration at Anson. Everybody working all over the world contributing to something that's just mind-blowingly enormous at the end. I love the team aspect in that we can throw out really crude, vulgar ideas onto the whiteboard and be comfortable, but that action of putting it out there is what moves the process for it. Once we have some flesh on that skeleton, we set out to have some features through a 50-piece orchestra, which we recorded in Prague. When we set out to record the orchestra, I was in New York, and I spent one Friday evening scoring the entire piece yeah. and pass it off to Rory. And then I got to like sit back and say, well, what can I bring to this that you know, add some contrast. Rory and I wanted to combine a wide swath of influences from 19th century romantic composers such as Beethoven, Berlioz, Mendelssohn, to off-the-wall orchestral techniques from the 20th century atonalists, and even threw in some New Orleans second line. All of this was to help illustrate the interplay between the righteous and the obscene, the inorganic and organic, between salvation and damnation. To a lot going on. Finally, and perhaps the boldest move of all, on the night before we delivered this, we took our collaborative work, comprised of hundreds of tracks and elements, thousands of little ideas from a dozen different creatives, and we made big, bold moves on the Stereo Master mix. We filtered, distorted, chopped up, and sewed back together our precious analog mix, to convey that the psychedelic journey alters your entire perspective and worldview rather than just discrete elements. 
Musically, it's this really strange and crazy juxtaposition of so many layers that you wouldn't typically find in this one single composition. You get this vocal element. Some more uh, hand percussion that's performative. Synth soils that are quite menacing. And some sticks. And when we play all of that, it... We set out to create something wholly original, collaborative, that pushed our limits and allowed us to explore and experiment along the way. It is a vulnerable place to be, to like try and offer your perspective. It might inspire another idea, or it might make the final cut, or we might all just say, okay, well, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> there must have been thousands and thousands of different unique ideas that went into this. And when the best ideas come, it's like everyone is like, okay, but that's it. <laughs> And much like the cyclical theme of the film, where the underlings organize and overthrow, eventually becoming the new boss, we too begin lost and out of place. Gradually, the beauty of uniqueness starts to emerge. It persists and enamors a cohort of like-minded individuals who put their unique compositions in a hallucinogenic stew that ultimately forms a unified composition. Like the repeater, we start with simplicity, add complexity to become simple and singular once again. <laughs>